What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, as you saw in the last video, we kind of got you up to speed on what's been going around in the shop. Uh, thanks to Remy for coming over and helping film a few things. In that video we mentioned that we were going to be picking the Forester up with the new intercooler and it's back. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, what Fast Tech made for us and what the scoop is with that. And then we've also been working on a few other projects over here. So I will uh, throw in some footage of assembling another EJ205 for a uh, friend slash customer for one of their rallycross builds. And uh, we're just going to keep going. So in this video we will not be dynoing the car. Um, with the new intercooler we have to kind of rescale what we had on 93 and then book the dyno. So right now it's looking like the 16th is when we're going to be dynoing. So that one might be... A little bit out but we're gonna catch you up to speed and show you what we're working on the shop today so kick things off Forrester's back looking good uh, let me go ahead and show you the old intercooler that we had just in case you forgot this is the turbo XS slash rev 9 kit uh, I painted our logo on it this is a really nice super affordable kit this is like 500 bucks on Amazon with everything cool uh, reservoir all the pipes couplers everything you know it's not the highest quality uh, the bracket that it comes with is garbage, absolute garbage. It's actually made for an STI, but if you make one of these, it sits on top and uses the factory screw mounting that comes with the kit. Um, this will actually adapt to the Forester frame rails so that it can fit. Uh, the WRX ones are shorter. That's really the only thing you have to change to run this in a SG Forester because they don't really make kits for these. So this one is uh, three and a half inches thick. It's like 23 inches long and eight or nine inches tall. Uh, really good up to about 500 horsepower. I really like this kit. Uh, we did switch to vibrant couplers just because of the higher boost pressures. We were worried about blowing them off. Um, and now I think I've got the biggest core that you can possibly fit on a Forester and still run a bumper. So this is an enormous uh, vibrant core. I tried to run a Garrett core, but unfortunately I could not find one that was lower than 10 inches tall for a uh, thousand horsepower plus rating. With these bumpers, you can't go over 10 inches or it actually um, won't physically fit in the bumper. So this one is 9.85 inches and as you can see, it is all the way to the very edge of the bumper and it goes all the way up to the top. So this is a massive five inch thick core. It's 26 inches long and 9.85 inches tall. Uh, it's just the core itself. And then Fast Tech made these amazing custom end tanks to use my stock pipes since they were already painted green. Uh, they did killer work on these. I kind of want to take the bumper off to show you guys, but it's kind of a pain in the butt and it's already on there nicely, so I'll probably take it off at a later time, but um, I just posted some pictures of this on Instagram, so if you want to see how good of fab work um, Andrew and Mark um, at Fast Tech did, check out our Instagram. But the fitment is awesome, the grill fits, bumper fits, everything's back on. It's absolutely massive. Um, probably going to have to paint it black or maybe even white, just so it kind of blends in, but very excited to have that back, which means we got to redo 93 quickly because of the changes, and then we shall run the dyno and put down some big numbers on E85, which is what everybody's been waiting on. So. Uh, switching gears, we are assembling another 205. This is, I don't know, the 12th one we've done this year. Well, in 2020. Um, this is a brand new <clears throat> 205 short block from Subaru. Uh, and then these heads were sent out to be decked and everything. They're in really good shape. It has all new valves, valve job on them and everything. Uh, we're doing all new timing, new oil pump. This uh, old motor had rod knock, so we don't use any oil components over again. So new oil cooler, new oil pump. 
Uh, I did clean out the pickup. It has the Killer B pickup. That's usually okay, but you don't want to use any of this other stuff. So unfortunately, the uh, with the new heads um, and valves, the bucket clearances are out on the cam, so I need to redo those on Monday. Otherwise, I'd have this in and out in a day. But as you can see, I got the oil pan pickup on, water pump, oil pump, most of the timing pulleys. Heads are bolted on with new head gaskets. Coolant crossover, PCB systems ready to go. On the intake over here, um, the old turbo inlet had broken off. Uh, the one that comes from the boost solenoid. And uh, when we took this off, I found a pretty hefty tear in the boot. So most likely there was a boost leak coming from there so new inlet went on factory one this is a stock class car so it has to have factory stuff so that's on i just need to clean out these surfaces put the new gaskets on put it on the block and it is almost ready to go i can't do the valve covers or anything else until i adjust the buckets but i can throw the exhaust back on and kind of build out the top so I'm going to throw you in a time lapse, get some of this motor together. Um, Steve from Pulls on Tuning is stopping by today. Check out the Forester and the updates on this car. He tunes every vehicle that comes through the shop. Uh, he's the best. So um, he's remote tuned this car, but he hasn't actually been in it at all through any of the revisions, really, because he lives in Georgia. So, um, and he has been in this before, um, but it's been a while since the changes so um he'll be here later and then uh we actually might go pick up a smoker tonight too kind of non-car related but all right i'll start in the time lapse and get to work okay when you're doing this you these stock manifolds are difficult uh, actually the aftermarket ones when you remove some of the stuff are easier but you have to be really careful when you're setting these down because if you notice in the video as i was trying to feed the um, coolant overflow pipe this in between here i tried to set it down very gently and this slid just enough that it creased these stupid cardboard gaskets and even though obviously it didn't go through it still kinked it moved some of the material we don't reuse that which is why i have so many extra of these because it takes two seconds to mess one of them up and i keep extra ones every time i go to subaru if i'm rebuilding cars i keep extra of those um the ones that go from the intake to tgv tops these are actually metal these ones are pretty good but these cardboard ones forget it this happens super easily so if you watched um, after i replaced it you have to very carefully set it down and then you need to align it up where the bolt holes are approximately right and then you'll get a flashlight and look in there and you want to do one side at a time just drop them in to get it centered before you torque it down and make sure everything is good to go um, these usually do not leak so i won't replace these if someone hasn't already loosened them so like on this car um, it was removed at the bottom i'm not going to replace this one because i'd have to take off more stuff and these metal ones usually don't leak these cardboard ones at the bottom are the ones that leak so the fret the mating surface on the head was cleaned I cleaned the surface on the intake and then uh, blew all the dust off of it or residue and got everything mostly pre-assembled. So I am now going to throw it back up on the time lapse, carefully drop the bolts in before we torque it down and make sure that all these little connectors and whatnot, none of these, you don't want to get these pinched under here. Oh, and one more thing. You see the, how the metal hard lines go under the intake, but they have rubber connectors here. Uh, and then there's a couple bigger ones over here, this one and another one. These things will leak on you. They won't be leaking in the car. You'll take it off to rebuild it and they will start leaking on you. And I actually checked these and three of the six were loose and one clamp was actually slid down and wasn't even clamped. So if it didn't have a fuel leak, it for sure was going to putting it back on. So always check these because you'll get it back in the car. And then especially the ones under here, the intake's got to come back off to replace them. This screwed me over on my first rally cross build put the whole car back together started up one of these lines burst on this side gas everywhere had to take the intake back off so it's definitely easier to do it now just check on these and make sure that they're all rotated right so they don't rub on each other all right so after that time lapse footage you saw me uh, putting the intake on and getting everything buttoned up so uh, that's about as far as i can get until i get 
uh, the box of buckets to reset the cam clearances and I can do the valve covers and whatnot and then finish out the timing. It's about to put the turbo on, but we're missing an up pipe gasket. So I cleaned off the surface and it's in place, but I gotta get one of those too. So I think that's about all I can do for now. Um, so we're gonna push this off to the side. Uh, Steve came, we checked out the Forester, did some drives in it. We're working on the idle a little bit. Um, trying to make it lope a little bit more and it wants to pulse with the cam so we're trying to do some open loop versus closed loop stuff and as I alluded to I went and picked up a smoker so this is a pit boss 1100 pro whatever um, so I'm trying my first uh, burn on it it came with a pellet full of or excuse me a hopper full of pellets no idea what flavor these are or anything might just be oak but either way, came with it. So, went and picked up some monster ribeyes, which are tented right now. So I'm trying to reverse sear on this thing, see how it works. So I cooked them slow at like 200 degrees, got them up to about 120 degrees, and now I'm cranking it all the way up to 500, and it has a center burn thing where you can sear them. So I'm gonna char the shit out of them and sear it in and see how it works. That's about all for today. Um, probably end the video here because it'll be about two days before I can get the buckets and the exhaust and everything uh, we did set the dyno date it is the 16th as I mentioned earlier I just got confirmation of that I think it's only gonna take about three pulls to uh, rescale the tuning for the bigger intercooler um, so that's good so that will get tuned up during the week I'll probably insert a few clips of that in the next video and then we will tune that later uh, Next video, I'll also probably be buttoning this up and maybe throwing it in the car. Depends on timing. And then we need to get back to work on the old rally girl here. So that's going to do it for this time, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.